Spelt out, this is Josh Chapman speaking, and today we're back in the recording studio in South Gippsland. We've done one from here before, you loved it. We're back here again. <laughs> you need the, <laughs> the air horn. <laughs> the air horn. We'll add that in, we'll add that in afterwards. Um, I've got uh, my brother back on, the, the theme tune writer. The very popular episode that we had here, but we've also brought in a bit of help. We've brought in the goat of wisdom himself, <laughs> Cam, Cam, Cam's best mate, Dara Wallace. How you going, mate? Good, good. I don't know whether help is the right word, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> He's here. I've been brought in. He's been brought in. So this is the first time we've done three on the proper gear. So I've done a couple where we've kind of had the myself and we've got like, hey, you hold the mic, you hold the mic, <laughs> and it's a lot of bit of pointing in directions and stuff, and it never really... It always sounds a bit dodgy, and I use the crappy because I've got these sort of low rent uh, office works mics that I use for when I'm outside and things in case they get dropped on the ground or something, and they're pretty rubbish <laughs> for the back alley three ways. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> for, so for uh, back in the in the studio, we've got the good mics, so the sound should be good. So I think everybody can be heard. And um, yeah, so you'd said that. Um, you know, when you did your one that you want to get Dara on because, you know... He's he, the, uh, you know, puts you in your place. I don't he's got a few <laughs> he's things got to a say. perspective. I've got, I've got opinions. Yeah, he's got opinions. I'll share and I'm, uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty cash. <laughs> oh, before we uh, we get into that, I was... Because um, I've been staying at, at our parents' place and we had the one a few weeks ago, we got the toy box out and we kind of pulled out the toy box out looking for Star Wars toys and we were like, oh, yeah, we found a couple, but we didn't find them all. I uh, was looking on some of the cupboards before I came, and I'm just going to pull this out of the pocket. I found Princess Leia <laughs> right here. Um, I think this is Endor Princess that is, Leia. That is, that is Endor. Endor Princess. She hasn't got a – it's basically what's under the poncho. So what's under the camouflage poncho? It's gone. Yeah, it's for when the weather finds up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Ready to go. So I'm going to sit her down down here. So I found her. I actually saw of them a few today and pulled a few out because I was like, oh, they're going to get trashed. Oh, you found some? Yeah, that's I pulled most of those out. So. Oh, so there's, you put them up, did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, so where were they? They were in the Lego. We got old school Lego box. <laughs> yeah, right. And then they're all, they all in there, the fat guy and the, the tall Ewok. And yep. Can't remember the the fat guy in the and top. The <laughs> yeah. They really epitomize Star Wars, don't they? That's the uh, you know, the, fat the guy. bomb, you gotta get me the fat guy and the tall Ewok. Yeah. <laughs> and uh yeah, well you must have saved this guy yeah, R2 D2. Yeah. R2. So yeah, I looked I actually when I pulled him out because of a previous conversation, I actually looked on the feet trying to find a date on it. Yeah, I'm not sure. That one's from that is from the, the show the show bag special. Yeah, I think he's a slightly later one because yeah. he's got the hole in the top of the head for the lightsaber. Yeah. So that must be post Return of the Jedi because the lightsaber yeah. obviously flies out the top. Yeah. So I don't think he's Star Wars original twelve. I think he's a newer because I think he used to be able to click his head and it would kind slowly of make it pop out, slowly yeah. pop out. But his head just kind of goes around and a little. We use matchsticks or something. Oh uh, yeah, I think whatever lightsaber. I don't even know. Did he come with a lightsaber or was it just if you had a lightsaber? I think it came with it. Be a bit of a. Yeah, I don't remember any of the other toys actually having. Did the Lukes have lightsabers? We had a Darth Vader that had, but that had the it was built up into the, arm. the arm thing. Yeah, the later so ones, the later ones had like hand. a like you put it in the hand and stuck out like a proper yeah, lightsaber. Okay. But we didn't have, we didn't certainly never return the Jedi Luke. We um, we might have had an Empire Strikes Back one somewhere, but again, no, who knows? No, no hard evidence one way or the other. <laughs> um, all right, so Dara. Yes, Cam's been through this before. You, you're actually you're actually a listener, which is actually very nice. I you am. say nice things about us on social media, I, <laughs> and I actually I, had um, I had uh, I did one yesterday with one of my cousins, and uh, one of the first things she said when I saw it was like, "Oh, my colleague at work loves your podcast. He's always talking about how much he loves it." I'm like, <laughs> "Wow, it's somebody that I don't actually know who <laughs> listens. We're I don't know if that's up. the only we're blowing up." There's a guy on Twitter actually who's really who I don't know. I can't remember his Twitter name now. He's gonna be really disappointed. But he's been he retweets everything. He's like, "Great episode. I loved it. This is great." And yeah, he's. I'm like, "All right, there's two. There's two out there." So yeah, we're taking off. We're going for three yeah. tonight. We're, going for three. Yeah, tonight, tonight we're going for a new a new. This is the one that's gonna push us over the edge. <laughs> I've got a a friend of mine, and if I get get her on next week, 
uh, when we're supposed to be recording. It'll probably come out before this because I want to rush it out. Um, oh, I'm being put in the backlog. Yeah, well, I've got I've actually banked a couple now, so I've got to, which is good. So I've got a few in the oh, backlog. But she uh, works for the British Film Institute, and she did work on production on Solo. So, Sweet. which she just dr- happened yeah. to casually drop into conversation on, you know, because she was at the UK premiere. I, I would casually drop that into any conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I love be... our ham cheese, yeah. and I worked on the Solo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, oh yeah, I was just I was involved in the periphery of the production or I was involved in some kind of production I'm like what what are you talking about you got to come on the podcast so she's going to come on so um, hopefully I'm going like if I get that and she's actually done something remotely interesting involving Solo. That's you know that's going to push us up before that. <laughs> We're getting bumped <laughs> <laughs> already. We're getting bumped already. So Dara, um, usually the first thing that I ask people on here is how are you feeling about Star Wars at the moment. I'm feeling pretty good about Star Wars. I. I... Well, I have mixed feelings about Star Wars. That's okay. You know, I feel like more Star Wars can never be a bad thing. I don't need to consume all the Star Wars, (laughs) but more of it is good because there's going to be, you know, more gems pop out every now and then. So we went and saw Solo last night. Yep, it was, hit the big Langatha uh, yeah, stadium. It was, yeah. it was a small cinema, but it yeah, was Yeah, Cinema 4 we were, and we, we were so casual, we rocked up on the time thinking it was lots yeah. of ads. We were late. Yeah, missed, and we like, thought we'd just walk into an empty seconds. cinema. And it was like, we had to sit on the side. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is bullshit. And, I thought and, this and, movie and, did badly. What's going first, on? Yeah, pissed the, Can't pissed get the a first seat. two minutes. And, but, Isn't that interesting? Like, I'd be curious to see if it's got a bit of legs like that. There was... There was John Kazan, who was one of the writers, who's Larry Kazan's son, was tweeting like, "You got to because the turnover's so quick. Yeah. They're like this is the last chance you get to see it on the the best screens, yeah, basically, yeah, like, and then it gets re- you know relegated to the budget screen and you know in the middle of the day for however long. And um, yeah, seems like it's got a little bit of legs. It's certainly at least down in Gatha. Yeah, yeah, was- I, yeah. It's on its way out. It's on its way out because there's only a couple of showings a day now. Yeah, we couldn't get the late yeah. one. <laughs> well, that's what happens because it's just like, you know, Jurassic Park's out next week and yeah, that's... and then they just roll into that and then yeah. that's done. And then you get your little, like, two-, three-week window and then you you just look forward to Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, Blu-ray. Is anyone still using them? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> buying them. Well, I bought the, um, I bought the 4K whatever it is, HD. I bought Last Jedi in 4K because yeah. I've got a 4K TV. But <clears throat> they don't put any of the stupid Bloody thing yeah. is they don't put any of the – like you buy the 4K DVD, it comes – like Last Jedi it was like three disc. It came with like the 4K DVD, the Blu-ray, and then like a bonus disc of extras. But the, the 4K has the, – sorry, the Blu-ray has all the bonus stuff. Like the commentary and everything is on the Blu-ray. It's not uh, on the 4K. So you can't watch 4K with commentary? No. No, it must be filling up the whole disc. I don't know. It's budget. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. So then I had to. So I haven't actually watched Last Jedi in 4K. Oh, because I think I've only watched the commentary. But anyway, still a bit of pain in the neck. Because I was because I got a, a package. You got that, and I got four Ranger Rock as well. Aren't seeing solo because everyone I told you, I'll just watch it. Blu-ray, wouldn't it? Yeah, there's like no yeah. reason. There's no incentive to rush, really. So cinema, yeah. If your hype level hasn't been brought up to the to to, to maximum, yeah. you know, in three months' time, I just I can get it on on Blu-ray. I, I think I think Avengers is something to do with it as well because that was the big blockbuster just a week or two before. Yeah, and yeah, Deadpool as well. Kind of like yeah, and yeah. Deadpool, yeah, yeah. Well, when I interviewed. Um, Jess and Eli, our cousins, who probably be on before you guys, and that was literally like we just saw Avengers and Deadpool, and you know, I just, there's only so many times you can get out and see stuff, yeah. and and like Star Wars, I need my hype, I need my hype meter to be to be charged, you know, and that's why the, the sort of the yearly releases were so good because I could sit there and I could you know get get excited again rather than being like oh I just went through this. Yeah, well, clearly Disney's playing off the the Marvel model and trying to trying to bust out a movie every couple of weeks. And, yeah, I feel like that's that's maybe not giving them what they deserve in in terms of a run-up, in terms of, you know, getting... It diminishes it. It's more like it's it's, it's event cinema, isn't it? It's supposed to be event cinema. It's supposed to be, you're not supposed to be like, I just saw it, i got to get up for the next one and... Yeah. Well, how long do we wait? Like 15 years (laughs) between movies? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Like... Me and Cam missed the originals 
in this cinema. Is, oh. <laughs> you know, but could you awesome. imagine it like going like waiting fifteen years for episode one, and then you know, and then they're going and someone saying to you, one. "Hey, before you know it, <laughs> before you know it, they're going to have a Star Wars movie, and then like less than five months later, there's going to be another Star Wars movie, like right yeah. after it. You'd be like, what? It was yeah. probably still playing in the cinema." Bloody episode one. But just the whole idea that they could be, like, almost shooting them, like, one after the other, like, literally, like, almost or at the same time, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. And you wonder what, whether that um, diminishes how much they can tie things in. Like, is the solo production talking to the Last Jedi production about, you know, even just for Easter eggs and little nuggets that you could include... If you had that space in between them, yeah, I mean they've got all the, the people had seen Last Jedi before they started. <laughs> they've got the story group and stuff, obviously, who are supposedly the masters of this. You sort of control the canon and things, but I think it feels like they they do have a big say on things. But ultimately, if a director, like the guy who or girl who's running the whole thing and dictating the story, is just like, I want to do this thing, they're kind of like, all right, well, you can do it. It's more going, oh, unless you're doing something that really clashes with the canon. But yeah, obviously, Solo. You know, give us your, give us your, how's your feelings on Solo? You came out, had had good times? As a Star Wars movie, it's like a six. Yep. As an action movie, it's probably like an eight. Yeah, right. That's so interesting. I feel like, I feel like totally enjoyable, fun sci-fi romp. Yep. Um, but I just don't know if we, how much we needed that movie now. Yeah, you know, I I feel like again it's a sort of thing of separation and and that that feeling that they're kind of just stepping on their own toes to get them out so quick. You always kind of feel like that they like Star Wars movies are supposed to live with you and they become a part of your yeah. thing and and you know and you take them with you. Like Marvel movies are good fun, but you kind of you know sort of forget about them after you've watched them unless. There's a couple that you might really like. Be like, oh, how much am I really going back to Iron Man 2 or, yeah. you know. But, like, you feel like the Star Wars movies, even though, you know, even people don't like the prequels, you still feel like, well, that was a, a, a period because I was this age and we did it and there was the lead up and we did the thing and I had the experience and everything. And the experience around it is almost as much as the movie itself. I think, I think yeah. with the prequels, I think the combination of the internet's new and the prequels came out. Yeah. How And just... It's it's part of cult. You need to know it as pop culture references, essentially. Yeah, there was. It was the one of the biggest first blockbusters to get internet hype before it came out. Yeah, and internet shit after it came out. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it, it set the tone for the internet for the. Yeah, rest of yeah. The, no one, I don't think no one was ready for it. I think it really. But did. compared to now, it's nothing compared to you know uh, where because you know like everybody's on the internet now, so yeah. it was still. And like, I've been avoiding solo talk on the internet, obviously, because I only just saw it last night, and then I. Because I knew I was talking to you today. <laughs> you just I, 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 I got onto the YouTubes and fell down a dark, dark abyss of. <laughs> Just, just wonderful people with wonderful opinions. <laughs> um, it's just, it's the worst, it's isn't just, it? Yeah, as little as we what? needed, uh, as I feel we, we needed solo right now, we needed the uh, opinions about it less. So, uh, <laughs> There's a t-shirt. Why do you do it to yourself? It's, as, it's like, why would you? I wouldn't even bother going near that. Stuff. Ah, but the thing is, nobody wants to watch a video about a guy telling you how much he loved it. You, it's more. It's yeah. this is weird thing you got. Like I want to see someone go mental over nothing because it's just more inter- interesting to watch somebody lose their mind and be completely irrational. If you just get someone going, oh, I thought it was great because of this, this, this. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, you're probably right, but I want to see some bloke go mental and throw his Han Solo toy across the room and yeah. get <laughs> get mad and you know <laughs> set his Millennium Falcon on fire in his backyard. Yeah. <laughs> but I love these Star Wars channels that are like, oh, never again boycotting, and yet they've seen it on opening night and. And they will see the next one on opening night, and it's yeah, it's just yeah, it's just. He's got the energy, the really. But, yeah. Have you ever gotten that mad about anything that that was uh, as insignificant as that? You know, like everybody gets mad about things that you know might have some significance, but as far as something sort of like a movie, have you ever like you know like if someone put like a record that you really hated that you got that mad about or a TV <laughs> I just, I just show? Thought, or? I just thought of uh, Michael Robb when he got the Black OPs album when with the first. Oh, album. when oh, Fergie movie. joined, <laughs> <laughs> and just how he's just heartbroken because the album before that is just one of the greatest. The Bridge in the Gap on yeah, it, yeah, such a good album. Yeah. And then that one came out, and he's like. 
that? I think <laughs> what did they I do? To it. I think he did threw it threw it out the window. I wouldn't <laughs> but hey, man, can't argue with the results. Can't oh, argue with the, the sales, hits, the, the units. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. William was he was right to do that, but it's, yeah. He was looking yeah, at global it's, domination. It's the right move career-wise, but yeah, some fans aren't going to like it. And then there's other fans that only know the Black Eyed yeah, Peas exactly, post-Fergie exactly. and follow and Fergie a into her solo <laughs> career instead of following, you know, Will I Am. This, so, this is how we, Star Wars should be compared to the Black, <laughs> the yeah, Black Eyed Peas. You can't yeah. please everyone. <laughs> uh, I feel like Not we've touched be. on the Black Eyed Peas in the last time that you were here. <laughs> yeah. you got a real bone to pick with the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> the Black Eyed Peas. Um, like Will I Am. Well, the great. thing about, like, Solo and, is that, like, you took your partner to go see it and yeah. she'd never seen a Star Wars yeah, movie first, before. Yeah. So that was her first Star Wars Start movie. Start to finish. So. Start to finish. So that's her Han Solo. Yeah. So <laughs> she walked out going, Alden Einreich is my Han Solo. I don't, this Harrison Ford guy, whatevs. I don't know him. <laughs> yeah, he's just some he's old dude. He's some old dude. He's playing you wrong. <laughs> she watched it go like, oh, he's not even doing it right. Like, why does he look weird? He doesn't even look like Han Solo. He looks like some kind of weird 70s dude. And I actually think I, I could understand Solo being someone's first Star Wars movie and them loving it more than, you know, some people, the prequels. Episode 1 was the first Star Wars movie yep. for a lot of people. And surely... Oh yeah, I know. I know young guys who are like they're my Star Wars films. Oh, yeah, there are was, there are long. stacks yeah. of younger Star Wars movie people who just love the prequels and that's their thing. And, yeah, and they but look I at don't the, get that as much as say seeing Rogue One or Solo because the the prequels were objectively shit. <laughs> <laughs> but Solo and and like Rogue One. Well, it's harder now Solo because I movies. think I'm getting to the. I think. I think we're better off that they were shit, to be honest. I don't know. There's something, yeah. as I was saying, the, the cult, the silliness, Jar Jar, all those weird sand, the sand everywhere lines. And like, but there's good, there's <laughs> there, great there's bits awesome in it, though. There are well. moments. Hey, we wouldn't have had uh, Pod Racer on the Nintendo 64 <laughs> if it wasn't for the prequels, <laughs> and that maybe makes it all worth it. That Pod Racer seems awesome. But the that thing was- is, like, originally uh, George Lucas wanted Ron Howard to direct episode one. So he, he, he tapped him to do it. It's like Rod Howard, safest pans, pair of hands you can get. You know, he did solo. He, you know, got it back from the... Saved it. Yeah. Saved it, but, you know, solid, not a risk-taking film. No. But... You could you have know, seen it. You could have, watching it, you go, oh, it, it would have been a disaster if those guys you, kept going. You just... Do you know what the risk was in that film? It was making a Han Solo movie so soon. Yes, after he died. Yeah. Han Solo. <laughs> you, just, you just killed one of the original three. Yep. It's and turning into like Marvel, you know, no yeah. one actually really dies. They just come well, back it. every two years. lucky they didn't try and do a Princess Leia you. film and then, you know, Carrie Fisher passes away. They, that would have been really awkward. Yeah. You know, at least it was just the character who passed yeah. away. Yeah, but give us time to miss the character and sort of uh, mythologise him in our heads a little bit longer and then give us a solo movie that sort of lives up to that. Have the... You know, you're going to have years, potentially you could have years of fan discussions and writers' discussions and producer-level discussions. Yeah, it doesn't like, kind of wonder, like, what's something. the rush, really? Yeah. yeah. I, another Rogue One-style thing where it's on the fringe of the events we know about, characters we don't give a shit about, <laughs> make us love them in those two hours, make us care about them, and then kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> so do you... <laughs> but I, I, I left solo... Twice, I don't, and it, I'm gone. I, I'm I'm thirsty for the next one. I really want to know what, I, what happens. I just, I just want to see the well, next solo. The next solo, like I yeah, think the next solo will be a better film than that. Yeah. Well, they're talking that maybe it'll be the start of a new timeline. So they're talking like there's going to be a Boba Fett movie, and he'll be in that solo timeline. So as in uh, he'll okay, kind yeah. of be a thing where there's a young Han Solo, there's a young Lando and they can kind of cross and, you know, maybe it's not, but he'll turn up and it's like a cross thing like that and they'll jump off. they do the, like, the Thor Hulk thing. Yeah, in, well. In the Marvel world, they, because they're scared to do a, a solo Hulk film again because they've all sucked. Yeah, that's right. So they, they've decided they're putting Hulk's storyline across three Oh. Marvel movies and Thor Ragnarok was the first one. Yeah, so I could see Boba Fett working like that because I don't think he can hold up a movie by himself. Well, I mean, I, it just depends if they call it Boba Fett or if it's just like 
you know, bounty hunters or, you know, oh, 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 no, we got into this deep with Eli. I just pictured bounty hunters and all of them walking slowly in the alleyway. Yeah, like yeah. it's Reservoir Dogs or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they, um, we got into this with Eli and Jess, so I won't try and grow over the same ground that they were talking about. But they had some, like, Eli's a big Boba Fett guy, so he had some interesting ideas. Let's just say he didn't want Boba Fett to have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best thing about Boba Fett, though, is we don't know much about him. Yeah. But he's, he's always kind of a bit shit, thing. though. He always kind of fails. Yeah, he never did anything. No, he just looks he looked real really cool. cool. <laughs> He's the but if we Fergie can... of those. <laughs> Which one is he? Black Oak? Is he? Uh, who's the other two guys? No one knows. Oh. Not a single person knows no, their names. They just, they just the way, Fergie baby. and there's <laughs> the the guy with the mohawk and the Asian every guy. Man's dream, just yeah. like just tagging along. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Being luggage in the, in the black verse now and then probably yeah. gets the guest writer to write the verse. And <laughs> God, if I could find some coattails to hang on to like that. Oh, yeah. dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously Solo's got a big uh, big reveal at the end there's a big character who comes at the end you kind of the big boss did you see that coming? I suspected because I skimmed through your episode with uh, your brother-in-law oh yeah and he kind of yeah I that think, was a I bad think, move. I think it was, Considering it was like we talk in depth about Solo, you're like, oh, well, how most, bad could this be? It was mostly an extended universe talk. Yeah, it which was. I, I know practically nothing of. Mm. Which is um, quite fascinating. People were really liking that one, actually. Cause yeah, he, that's really he good. He goes deep. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I did hear the name mentioned as I was skimming through that, and then I sort of half forgotten while I was watching. But then it gets to a moment where you then think he's there, you're like, ah. Oh, here, he here he comes. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Meh. I don't know. You're not offended nor re-offended? No, it's, it's interesting. He's there. He survived. That's cool. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm not angry that he's there, but it didn't, he, you know, it's not a character that's sort of all that menacing or... He's not a particularly sacred character, is he really? Yeah. No, he's certainly not mysterious. Like, he's a dude who comes out and swings double lightsabers and kicks ass because Ray Park <laughs> plays him. Um, but that's his. that was his shtick in the prequels. Like, he didn't have um, much personality. They could only really other... make him more interesting, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah but other than as a fighter, he had no... See, Dario hasn't got any... Personality. Clone Wars, Rebels insight to... No, I never, I never got no, So that's fine because you're just coming and you're like, all right, well, yeah. I heard that he's there. So he seems that he's got a little bit more going on than he had before. He's obviously gotten over getting chopped in half and being kicked down a hole. So that's good good for him. Well, yeah, dead old couple of band-aids, you're off, <laughs> off <laughs> on your way. Dead old. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm sure Ray Park is very happy to have gotten the call again. They still have to dub his voice. Have you ever heard Ray Park talk in real life? Yeah, he's, he's like, hello, he's like trashy hello I'm, Ray, I'm oh. Ray Park. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, no wonder we dubbed you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, governor, I'm going to get this lightsaber out now. Yeah, he's oh. like, he should be in a Guy Ritchie film or something. Oh, you red. <laughs> <laughs> rimmer, rimmer. <laughs> 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 Um, did you think you were going to see Jabba the Hutt in Solo? Did you kind of go no, in thinking I was, I was, gonna... I was, ho- I was hoping not. I, I, I mean, they were obviously, they were really going to sequel Jabba the Hutt yeah, they, by yeah. the end of that. Yeah. I thought, especially when I saw how young he's supposed to be. Like, it's, it just seemed too early to be shoehorning him in. Hanging with Hutt. <laughs> hanging with Hutt. with Hutt. Episode. <laughs> hanging with, yeah, hanging with Solo Hutt. Solo 2. Yeah. Hanging with Hutt. The I kind of assumed that he would be in it. And I was more going, I just hope that he... Looks like puppet Jabba the Hutt and not shonky oh, CG but Jabba the Hutt. I want deleted scene fat guy in a fur coat Jabba that the Hutt. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's been dead 30 years, but we got, you know, we got a look alike for him. <laughs> they just completely wreck on Jabba and make yeah. him a fat guy, fat Scottish guy again. Yeah. <laughs> and they go Bring back and re edit the other films. Yeah. yeah. It's like, we can do what we want. That's Once all it's the, on streaming, all these do? purist fans who want to go back to the originals and no special special <laughs> versions, that's what they should be gunning for. <laughs> yeah. Fat guy in a fur coat. Fat guy in a well, fur the, coat. As your Han Solo solo theory of the fur coats fit right in. Yeah, that's right. Well, there was a lot of fur coats in that. There was, there, there was really no... Although in the film it was sort of like, I think they showed everything in the trailer. There's actually quite a lot they showed in the trailers. Yeah, I, I texted you after seeing it saying... 
because I then I went and watched the trailer. I was like, God, that trailer shows a lot of like a lot of the best lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was kind of weird because like, like Last Jedi really didn't show that much, and they especially like third act and didn't really get an idea of what the real plot was. But yeah. and I kind of thought, well, Solo's the same. I thought it was going to really be top heavy, and then you're going, oh wow, like they're on that planet at the end with like they. Near, near the cliffs on the yeah, beach and yeah. stuff, going that's yeah. right near the end of the film. I'm like, oh, geez, I actually have shown yeah. quite a lot. I'm, I'm quite pleased I skipped that trailer. <laughs> yeah, probably a good move. I have a hard time skipping the trailers. <laughs> I always put it off. Like the trailer will come out, and then a couple of days later, I'll go. Feed. Oh, yeah. They won't show me too much. They always do. <laughs> the, they do. Oh, they, yeah, just, they're pretty good. The trailers just Darth Maul. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hello, come and watch Solo. <laughs> headbutts, a, headbutts a football and gets stuck on the spot. Oh, his head. oh no. Ooh. Offside. <laughs> Offside. <laughs> um, so you guys have always been uh, good buddies for a long time and uh, you were around a lot when we were growing up and stuff. And yeah. um, do we – we did a bit of Star Wars stuff like – do you guys like watch Star Wars and stuff at each other's places and things like that? Like, I'm just trying to like I'm trying to yeah. separate me from the I'd conversation and stuff. We, yeah, we definitely would broke it out every now and then. Yeah, definitely would have broke it out. Um, Played a lot of games and yeah. Did movie. you guys see the prequels at the cinema together? Um, Where were you guys I then? Remember, I remember. Going, been... I remember seeing the special editions in the cinema when yeah, they came boys. out. Yeah. Um, we'd go over to, because Lee and Gatha didn't have a cinema at that point, we'd have to drive <laughs> oh, over to Mall. Gone to Mall, yeah. Went with the Durant boys over to Mall and watched Don't them. make eye contact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we literally, I think one of those times we actually saw someone with moccasins filling up their car. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. God, the legends are true. <laughs> the legends yeah. are true. And, but, uh, yeah, so I that think was... I was. I think when the prequels came out, I was in the city. In yeah, what year, what year were the prequels? 99. So I was in third year uni. So you must have been well, we, last year of high we school. Were still in high school. So we probably did go see. We probably saw the first one. The first one. Yeah. I remember seeing the third one with uh, like a few friends in the city. That's 2005. That would have been. I was in England by then. Yeah. And we'd lived together for a year. I think when you first came to uni, that was about 2002. So you might have even seen the second one with me, maybe. God. I don't remember. I'm just trying to put the mm, ten nah. so long ago. They're um they're pretty forgettable for me. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one I've probably watched a couple of times, but two and three I don't think I've gotten back to. Yeah. Well, as you know, because I had um Eli and Jess on, and they were just like, "Revenge of the Sith is our our yeah, thing. That's it. We love that's that. You know, you know, yeah, that's their yeah. empire." Yeah, I look. I think they they were well, like, I oh, know we know the originals are, are better films, or we think they are better films. But like, because we were that age, that that's you know, that was our jam at the time. We yeah. saw that, and that was yeah. what we were really into, and we still love that one. And you know, the third one particularly, and it's like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That you could kind of you know. I think if you put episode four in front of a, a teenager now, they'd have a hard time with the pacing. It's a seventies movie. Yeah, it's real slow. Yeah, especially the first half of that yeah. film. It's really – I was kind of thinking that about showing all of that, just kind of going, there's a bit of like you're going to have to stick yeah. with it and, you know, it, the, it is it is uh, running at a slightly slower pace. And for the day it was like really intensively kind of – Oh, I think the heat is just about to explode. We don't want the studio to explode. Um, yeah, so I think – Trying to get kids into starting because you always you kind of go well. The default is you got to start with episode four, like you know it's the original, you know arguably the best. You know that's the one you want to show your kids first, but it's actually yeah. probably the hardest to get them into because it kind of the start is pretty slow. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm re- reluctant to show my kids. Like I've got a, I'm just nearly eight now, nearly eight year old. So, but. I'm reluctant to sort of force it onto her. I'm waiting for her to come and say. I suppose you could just jump. It's time you could father. jump onto Force. You could jump onto Force Awakens, and it would probably be a pretty good. You know, you could probably come in on that. Yeah, similar that's... plot. You know, female hero, probably a little bit more accessible. Uh, not so much seventies pacing and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. It's... Yeah. It's kind of nice to also the, to think of like doing it in the order we did it. Yeah, we kind of like, hey, look, if you're going to love it, you're going to love it the way I tell yeah. you. You're going to do it <laughs> yeah. this way. And if you're not on board, then 
So they're sitting at the couch, like straight ahead, and you're just staring at them. Oh, yeah. You love it. <laughs> yeah, you Enjoy better love this. this. Don't fall up, fall asleep, <laughs> or look away, <laughs> or look at your phone. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to film you when the "I'm your father" bit comes out because you've got to <laughs> react the way I want you to react. Otherwise, there's going to be trouble. I'm worried. I always worry about. I think because Lawrence has got a um a clock, one of those Lego Yoda clocks. I'm like going, oh, maybe I should remove it because it's going to ruin the spoiler that he's like. He's not just some crusty old, yeah. you know, alien. He's actually a Jedi master, you know. He doesn't quite know the context yet, does he? Yeah, does does he it talk or anything? Bit, or? You know, but, like, if you've never seen Yoda before... That he's someone of note. Uh, yeah, sort of. that he's someone of note, yeah. Maybe. He's not some just local you'll Yahoo. A, you'll have a hell of a time keeping him away from spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, kids now, they're probably... Yeah, I don't know. It'd be weird to be a kid and not know... Like, just be into Star Wars and be getting someone trying to tell you what happens in, like, eight movies yeah. plus spin-offs and, like, and then there's a Han Solo, but then it's a different guy and he's younger and then he does this and then, then and then Chewie and then Darth Maul turns up and yeah. then... Uh, here, kids, listen to this podcast. Yeah, here, here. Make it easy and just listen to this podcast with these idiots trying to, to explain to you what's, go- well, <laughs> what's going you on. Think about, you know, Lawrence is three and by the time he's old enough actually for Star Wars... Like now that they're pumping them out, <laughs> it's like yeah. So if he's like seven when he or six or seven, there'll be three or four more movies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> movies. You know, you, he'll have the uh, Favreau TV show by then. Yeah, which may take over all of them. Yeah, well, we've got like four. We've had like four new Star Wars movies now. Like there was always six, and we're already up to four. Well, there was already there was only ever three. Yeah. Then there was six, and now we've got four more on top of that now. So we've actually got ten films. Yeah. We've got another one next year. So we've almost made more than we actually had for years in in the space of sort of like four years. Yeah. Well, another two years, and we'll we'll have overtaken. Overtaken. Yeah. You know, in a decade, we'll have twenty. <laughs> Oh my, god. Hey. oh my god! Yeah, they should have a little two-year, three-year breather, two-year breather, or something maybe. I think so. I look. I don't think it'd be a bad thing if they just totally cock one up and take a break for a few years, Batman style. Like you want to see a, the, the, the Star Wars equivalent of Batman and Robin, yeah. where it's just so bad that people are just Joe, going, "What?" Joe Silverman or whatever his name is. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Um, Joe Schumacher. Joel Schumacher. Joel Schumacher. Get him to do a Star Wars movie. Well, the thing yeah. is now, because there's so many... Nipples on every suit. Because there's so much, you know, like, people go, oh, they rag on the prequels and stuff, and it's kind of like, well, that was the vision of one man who had an ultimate vision, had ultimate say, and had it the way he wanted no it. Re- and yeah, basically, no, and also no ran, no ran the company, no rewrite, ran, ran the company, paid for it. It's, yeah. it's and the perfect example of having just yes men around you. Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. No one would have challenged him on anything. No. Yeah. And that's what made the originals great, is that... Everyone was sort of doing it for the first time, and everyone was having ideas. And ILM were inventing stuff for it, and yeah, and then yeah, and there were restrictions as well. That it was like technological restrictions and time restrictions and money restrictions that meant that you had to still do things a certain way. So the yeah. reason it is it is the sum of its you've parts. You've seen the YouTube on how his wife re-edited the edited edited the edited the end of the film. How she fixed it and added tension to it by having because originally I think the movie uh, they weren't actually uh, their their planet wasn't actually in danger or something oh, like right. just flying in or something like that so it was just like randomly so sitting around random, but she yeah. by editing it Made it like, oh, we've got to destroy this Death Star, or everyone's dead. Before yeah, right. Around. Interesting. So okay. she added that whole element. Like yeah, they did say that the, it, Star Wars was saved in the editing room. That yeah, it yeah. was sort of the first assembly was a bit of a shambles and things. But, yeah. but the, the sort of the point I was making that you know, like the prequels were like one man's vision. The guy who paid for it. This is my way. That I'm doing it exactly the way I want it. You know. The new Star Wars, the way that's run now, you know, Kathy Kennedy runs it. You know, there's a certain level of quality that basically has to be upheld. That you know, she's basically gone. You know, and she's fired directors and replaced people and just gone. If it's yeah. not at a level that's acceptable, we're basically either going to redo it. Or, you know, no one's going to see it or we're going to, you know. So the chances of getting your Batman and Robin yeah, it's is very likely. is very difficult. I suppose it's also like a lot, you know, Batman and Robin was just sort of, you know, 
Batman and Batman and Robin is a result of Batman Forever, but Batman Forever is a result of Batman Returns. So basically, yeah, was Batman was so petty, successful. Petty, yeah, was Batman was so successful that they told Tim Burton, "You can do whatever you like." And he went, "All right, I'm gonna. I'm weird. I'm Tim Burton. I'm gonna make a totally weirdo <laughs> Batman <laughs> Returns that some people love, but it's pretty out there film, you yeah. know. And it's like it doesn't def- feel like but penguins movie deformed movie. and blah blah blah. And they all went, "Oh, we can't sell McDonald's meals to this. This is crazy." So we're gonna get Joel Schumacher, and he's like. Well, all right, we're going to make it bright and we're going to make it this. And and then that's what Batman Forever was. It was a massive hit. And he went, all right, well, you could do what you want now. You can go crazy. And he's like, all right, we're going to make a $150 million version of the 60s TV show with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's why we got Batman and Robin. But, you know, you don't get Batman Returns. and Sorry, you don't get, you know, Batman Begins in the Dark Knight without going through that. No, you have to. You, you know, if Batman and Robin it. had been middling and not so terrible, they would have just made another one. Yeah, there would have been 20 okay Batman movies and never The Dark Knight. Yeah. So maybe sometimes you've got to burn it down. Yeah. Because the problem is, is that Solo... I think it was a good, fun film, and yeah. I think it'll be revealed. It'll be revealed. People will be like, yep, I'm totally happy with that. But it didn't do great business. So the question is, is it the fact that the film is fine is the problem, or is it, you know, if it had been the radical Chris Miller, Lord, wacky, push the boat out, let's do something crazy, or would it have just been, you know, as unsuccessful because of the timing, and people just hated it because it was terrible. And then you've got a double whammy. And then people will be looking at Kathleen Kennedy going, what the hell, man? You put this piece of shit out and we all hate it and that's why nobody went. Rather than well, you put this movie out that was fine it's and okay. good fun, but I just saw a Star Wars movie five months ago, so I'm not rushing out to see another one. Yeah. It's it's a tough call. I'm glad I'm not making those calls. <laughs> not <laughs> I yet. I, I definitely wouldn't have done a solo if it was if I was running that. If I was running Lucasfilm, I I wouldn't have done a solo movie at this point. But Lord and Miller, if you'd given them something not solo at this point, and they had to bring it back to the Marvel thing, their Thor Ragnarok kind of moment, yeah, just a zany. Even if they'd said, that, even offshoot. if they'd said like up front, we're doing a Star Wars comedy, yeah, and said it, we're doing a Star Wars comedy, comedy. And yeah. it's going to be the this 21 be wacky. We're at Drum Street guys. You love those guys. <laughs> you know, my name is Jeff. Everyone loves that. And it's going to be whatever. It's going to be a couple of characters. It might be Jar a couple. Jar Jar Binks and a buddy well, it have to be. It could have just be like two. <laughs> I'd watch the shit out of two Jar-Jar dumbass Binks. rebel, two dumbass rebel <laughs> soldiers <laughs> or something. You know, like. <laughs> no, what's the what's the guy with the, Jackie Chan? Chris, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> with Jar Jar. <laughs> Jar Jar and Chris Tucker <laughs> together at last. <laughs> it's two sidekicks. <laughs> two sidekicks. <laughs> two sidekicks. Yeah. Wow, there's the episode title right there. There. Two sidekicks with Jar Jar and Chris Tucker, brought to you by Chris Lord and Phil Miller. <laughs> what, are what are you doing? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? It's like two this goes on for two straight. hours straight. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Somebody do that on YouTube, please. Yeah. But yeah, if they'd said that we're doing the, the, the comedy and whatever that is. Expectations yeah. would have been different. You couldn't um, do it with core characters, though. Well, that's the thing. Like the whole, you know, the whole rumors that came out when they were shooting it is like these guys are just improv crazy. They just the guy who's playing Han Solo can't handle it because they're telling him to be more wacky or be more improv and be more quippy. And he's like, I'm trying to be Han Solo, you know, like Very cool. Yeah, and then like Larry Kazan, who you know wrote Empire Strikes Back and wrote this, is just like, dude, like. Stick to the script, man. Like yeah. the script is solid, you know. Like if you want to do a little bit of improv, then cool. But I think, I think that had a lot to do with it. That it wasn't. It's not the, the character or the place that it's. To, you know. And if you watch that movie, and you kind of go, well, they just stuck these. And there's gags in it, but they're all in context. It's no sort of. Yeah, there was some. There was some solid funny moments. But yeah, but you kind of. I don't know what kind of kind of jokes you think they were going to be putting in. But maybe Chris Tucker got cut out. Of it. They were going to do the Men in Black. Were they? I think like all Guardians it? of the Galaxy kind of thing. They were going to do some Men in Black with the guys from the yeah, police yeah. film or something like that. The crossover. Oh yeah, I was talking about the start the context of Star Wars, but yeah, like I think they talked about doing Twenty One so Jump Street guys yeah, doing Street, Men in Black. Men in Black. Yeah, yeah, like be, great, be awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. I'll watch that. Yeah, that'd be I think they're doing Men in Black now with Chris Hemsworth and 
the girl who was Valkyrie in Thor, and they're the two men in black, or the lady in black and the man in black. Persons in black. People in black. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Four. So, yeah, anyway, it's kind of said and done. Like I, like you said, I hope that they, they continue the solo thing. I hope it does enough bank or gets enough support where they go, like, yeah, it's worth We're big continuing. On v- VHS. Yeah. Yeah, and it can still do good big numbers on DVD. And I think it will because I think people will still want to watch it. I think people will just like, I'm happy. Oh, I'm, I'm interested. It. I want to see it. I just don't have time to go now because I just saw some other stuff and, you know, I only get out of the house every now and then. So, um, and then there is the, like, looking forward, I suppose, they've got, like, the Ryan Johnson's doing his trilogy, the Game of Thrones guys are doing some movies, Favreau's doing TV. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm most excited for, it's Favreau's TV show. I think that could, that could be a good uh, gap filler. You know, yeah. for those who want to flesh out the universe a bit more and, and, and not, you know shit on the main storyline while it's doing it hopefully yeah yeah I, I, you reckon it'll be pretty separate separate to everything it won't touch on I mean obviously it's not going to touch on big three because you're not going to get big three I mean it might be they might drop a name or somebody like yeah it, but I hope I hope it's not so separate that it's like they're unaware of those events yeah I, I'd want to I'd want to see uh, that that the events of the main saga well, you kind of want whatever this TV show you is. You want stuff whatever. to touch because they're kind of going, oh, you know, there's a side where you're going, oh, um, everything kind of links up and it all ties in and a little neat little bow and sometimes you want to see new things and stuff. But you kind of go, well, if, if it has no connection, it could be anything. It might as well be Battlestar Galactica or something. Like it, yeah. It's got to have connections to the things that you know and the places and stuff. I guess it depends on how close you go. You don't want to go off. Oh, on the timeline as well, If it, how much the timeline overlaps. Yeah, but I suppose whoever it is. So if you, I'm assuming you're going to have a handful of characters. You know, you probably have five or six CG characters, and um, they'll at least be affected by where the Empire and the Rebels are battling. Who's taking control of what? System yeah, I think it's and all that set sort of stuff. after Return of the Jedi. I think. And not long after Return of the Jedi. I think that he said that somewhere. That's where he okay. said it was going to be set. So I don't think it's like literally just after Return of the Jedi, but I think it's not long after Return of the Jedi. We're talking like a year or two, okay. which is probably quite an interesting thing because it's kind of like, well, the war's kind of over, but, you know, who's kind of in charge? And, yeah, yeah. you know, you're not in charge, but are you in charge? And over here, you're still here and we're still here. And it could be quite, quite an interesting way of doing it. But Well, in those years between... That and Force Awakens, you've got the dregs of the Empire turning into the First Order. So seeing how that happens could be pretty interesting. Yeah, whether they... I don't know how, how much is touched upon in the books and things, or whether they literally just turn up their tails and run, or whether yeah. they hang around and try and fight fight back for control for a bit, or whether they, you know, they've got a plan, or... You in charge? No, yeah, you in charge. charge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's running things now? Well, it's going to be like... I, I imagine it like the um, like the Soviets at the end of World War Two trying to hang on to little patches of land. There's going to be some countries, or in this case, some planets, that stay under empire, if not empire control, empire style control. Yeah. Whatever general was running that place now becomes president of that planet. <laughs> yeah, and how much can you control the control the information? And people are like, hey, we heard that the, the emperor's dead and the, the empire's like, mm, not really know what I heard. Everything is... Look, here's a picture of... Get back to work. Yeah, I think that like a Cold War, end of Cold War style kind of thing would be quite interesting, I think. And then it doesn't have to be, you know, because obviously TV has a limited budget. I know we've got Game of Thrones and stuff, but that's like, you know, $10 million yeah. an episode or something. But I, can, I can't imagine they're doing that. Is, it, is this going to be... As I said, no CG movie? characters. I just... think Disney have got their... Are, do, are launching their own streaming platform or oh, their own yes, version of Netflix. So I think everything's going on there. So I yeah. think that's why they're going, hey, you're yeah, going to want to pay for another streaming platform. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, And I'm going to bring it back to Marvel again because I'm a comic book nerd as well. So... My nerdness. That's why you're here. Um, it's the Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so uh, if they do a level of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., if they get to that level, that'd be okay. 
it'd be nicer if they got to a Jessica Jones daredevil <laughs> kind daredevil of kind level of level yeah lots of fighting in corridors anywhere in between would be great yeah corridor fights corridor are, fights. are what makes a Marvel TV so as long as it's like not shoddy effects and stuff like like you know like cheap sci-fi t- no, I'd rather yeah. not see it like I'd rather see them climb into a cockpit and then just the camera pan down so it looks like they're going up than some shonky CG X week. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I would rather yeah. just cut it seventy style. Yep. Just show me the the, the one yep. X wing that you've built up close, and then just have it, you know, yep. raise off a crane, and then that's it. Like that's all I need to see. Like exactly. I don't need to see yeah. some kind of slightly crap looking, you know, CG thing. Like just save your money and put it into <laughs> put it into the next thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, they do what Thrones does. You know, they have the speaky episode, and then they. Save yeah. a big budget for like every third one. Like yeah, and the rest thing. of the time everyone's just walking around the garden talking and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what and we you can do that. For. We watch it for the garden. For the garden. <laughs> for the garden. <laughs> That's right. Stay for the gardens <laughs> yeah. on, on Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> um, so you guys did was it episode one racer you were talking about before? Yeah, pod racer <laughs> was. Was that N64 or was that – that was N64, wasn't it? Yeah, that was N64 and it was – I'd say it's probably in the top 10 games on that system. It was a great game. It was a great racer. I don't know if I've ever played it. I must have. I think I – it was like me with Mario Kart. I kicked your ass in Mario Kart, but you kicked my ass in – I don't I don't remember it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a to, long time ago. Might have to bust it out. Need to tell. Rematch. Yeah. Um, Sobolba. Sebulba was the best. You couldn't be beaten. Yeah, there was a um, there was a tweet that was going around Twitter the other day. You probably, I think I might have even retweeted. You might have seen it, Dara. You're a pretty good social media kind of dude. That um, Hayden Christensen was playing in some UK charity soccer event. Oh really? So there was like I don't know, like something aid, World Aid or whatever, and it's and they were playing at Old Trafford where Manchester United play, and like playing on there was Hayden Christensen for the, you know, so there were all these jokes going around of uh, who, what's your Star Wars 11? You know, who's your, who would you have in your Star Wars 11? Yeah. So I, I did one. I can't remember where everybody had because somebody had said, oh, you put Jabba, they're like, I'll put Jabba, the, it might have been Andy actually, Andy Campbell who's been on a couple of times from um, that geek pod, and he's like, I'll put Jabba the Hutt in goal. And I'm like, Perfect. on paper it makes sense, but... He's not very nimble. He's only got little hands. So if you get, <laughs> he can it, only cover one. Side he can only cover if you yeah. get enough because he's only got one. He's got that bit of space. Yeah. So if you if you place a shot top right corner, <laughs> you can probably get past him every time. He doesn't got ice hockey. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said uh, Rio Durant in goal, who was the guy who was flying the ship in Solo, who had the four arms. Yeah, Favreau. Yeah, Favreau. Yeah. Because he's got four hands. Yeah. But he's nimble. And he's I, pretty little though. Yeah, I don't know. You might have a good leap on him, though. Yeah, true. But I had said that up front, Sebulba, as your striker, yeah. he's all legs. <laughs> he, walk, he literally walks on his hands, so he's never going to get handball, and he does everything with his feet. So he'd be able to almost physically pick the ball Pretty up with his Brazilian. foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he'd almost be able to like <laughs> grab the ball with his, like it's a hand and just, just piff it, it. Into, <laughs> piff it into, into the net. So he was my call for, for striker. Um, I can't remember who else I had. I think I had... Um, Captain Phasma as centre back and uh, and uh, a couple other people I can't remember. I have, to, I have to check my Twitter; it's on there somewhere. But Land- Lando is coach, you know, in the nice suit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd get angry enough, would he? <laughs> I think someone had said that you get um, Ben Mendelsohn's character from Rogue One as your coach because oh, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he gives a bit <laughs> yeah. of a yell. He give the old <laughs> Sir Alex Ferguson hair dryer treatment, you know, like yeah. he'd blast the hair back, give you <laughs> give you a bit of a run for his money. Um, yeah, so that was good fun. So hopefully Hayden Christensen, uh, you know, gets a couple of touches, gets a few kicks and things. <laughs> I'd like to see him, you know, be he's welcome. Bri- back. He's not British. He's American. Isn't he? Yeah, no, he's, he's American. A Canadian, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think he was British. American light. Yeah. American light. American yeah, that's why he's so polite about people bragging on his acting all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had, a, <laughs> I had a hot take on that last night. We, had a- we were talking about just... Star Wars, funnily enough, last night after seeing Solo. And uh, it, it dawned on me that Hayden Christian's whiny little jerk shtick uh, may have been a nod to Mark Hamill in the first, in episode four, because oh, he, he was such a whiny kid. Yeah. He was on Tatooine. 
is. But he's got a lot more to whine about. Like, he's stuck in the middle of nowhere doing chores. Like, Anakin Skywalker's seen the galaxy, getting to live in the capital, getting to use a lightsaber, getting to have powers. Like, he's, oh, got, it, he's got it all. Like, all he has to do is take shit from, his, from Obi-Wan every now and then for doing the wrong thing, which he is doing anyway. Yeah. Like, he's got a way more exciting life than Luke has. Like, no wonder That's Luke set. complains. That's it. But I, I think there's just a, there's a long tradition of whiny little turds saving the world. Whiny Skywalkers. Whiny Skywalkers. Yeah. Hey, look, you know, Ben Solo, who is a Skywalker, Walker, he's he's not exactly uh, keeping the whininess to himself. No. <laughs> there are the whole long line of whining. I come from a long line of whiners. Bratty yeah. teenagers. Aren't yeah, exactly. We've got, a, we've got a long line of bratty entitled teenagers. Yeah. I can't work out how old is Kylo Ren supposed to be? Because it's a good Fletcher question, is actually. like 40 something. No, he's, a, he's at least in his 30s. Uh, Adam, Adam Driver, yeah, yeah he, would, he, he, he was in the army. He yeah, was like, he yeah. was like a like, like a Navy SEAL or something. Yeah. Yeah, like you don't want to mess around with him. Proper badass. Yeah, yeah, and then he got injured or got discharged, and he had to like take up acting because he couldn't be in the army anymore. <laughs> Let's take up acting. The obvious <laughs> yeah. second choice yeah. in Girls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know how old he's supposed to be. He must be about thirty. I think oh. he's playing younger though. He's playing yeah, he's late definitely, 20s. He's definitely playing a little he's a late 20s than he is, but... guy, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Still impressionable and still. Yeah, I think of... he was supposed to be late 20, mid to late 20s, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Because I think, well, well, Jedi is 30 years after Force Awakens. So even if he was born the day after. Then you start to settle down. <laughs> <laughs> temper out a little bit. Yeah, temper out. You know, you let things brush by a bit. <laughs> you don't hold so many grudges. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> well, so many forced tantrums. Yeah, well, I think Ray is supposed to be in her early 20s. I think she's obviously in her early 20s. She obviously looks a lot younger. So there is a bit of an age gap there. Um, so I don't, they're, I don't. Well, they're certainly not twins. I don't think they're brother and sister. I think that's been pretty established now, despite some people thinking that Ray's parentage hasn't been decided and stuff. But yeah, they could totally undo that though. Well, that's the thing. Like a lot of people kind of go, "Oh, well, they could, they completely wreck on that." But I, I like, I like that she's just, she's just her. She's got to yeah, deal with, she's got to deal with her own destiny. She doesn't like need that. to worry about being anybody else. Because the whole um, Skywalker solo dynasty kind of thing. I think kills the uh, kills a little bit of the, you know, the imagination of oh I could be there anyone could be, you know, anyone could be saving, saving the, galaxy. the galaxy. But it's really, not- no, no. Unless you're a Skywalker, you pretty much you, <laughs> you're the only ones who yeah, can do it. You really yeah. can do it. Yeah. You know, and they haven't got the best track record with those Skywalkers. They get there in the end, but like they <laughs> yeah. do a lot of bad stuff in between. Like, you know, Anakin wasn't exactly a clean nose, and Luke had his problems, and uh, yeah, very forgiving. Ben Solo, like you said, he's got a few anger management issues and things, obviously. Um, yeah, it's a good point about it. I never really thought about it. I just, yeah, I kind of assumed that he was sort of late late 20s. He's certainly throwing tanties a bit like a entitled teenager. But yeah. Yeah, it feels, at times, it feels like he's supposed to be 15 and then he's clearly not. Yeah, well, I mean, that you know, I think there's probably plenty of boarding school kid thing, is it? You think he got shipped off kind of thing? <laughs> yeah. he got, he yeah. Maybe he wasn't around with, um, you know, harm, keeping him, keeping him in check. In he his came back with an attitude. Came back from, you know, from Hogwarts with a bit of an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> from, 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 from Luke's Hogwarts. Luke's Hogwarts, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a joke about um, at the end of last year when you got the kid who's got the broom and he's making the little lightsaber out of the broom and, like, he's calling him Broom Kid and it's just, like, Ray's school of witchcraft and wizardry where she's <laughs> yeah. teaching all the new all the Jedis and things. And, yeah, it'd be funny to see, I mean, when episode nine picks up, whether she's, you know, a couple of years into teaching Jedis or whether she's still trying to figure it out or whether it's happened the next day again or... Oh, straight into it. I'd like a jump. I'd like to see a, a jump in time like we got with sort of... I think they need to do Empire a jump to because... Jedi. Princess Leia's not around anymore. No, yeah, no, more just mm. because the rebels are so depleted. There's only like there's ten of them. <laughs> yeah, they've <yeah. laughs> like even got enough know, to yeah, field like, a football side. Like last, last film. Let's give it a go. And it's like four dudes. <laughs> four like, dudes yeah. running out. <laughs> like, well, <Get> em. credits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's the end. Um, yeah, it's a good point, actually. Yeah, I hope there's a little jump. Like, yeah, a couple of years or something would be I quite interesting so. to I, see. I think so. Needs to, they need to recruit and 
Well, they're going to need to explain where Princess Leia is, so they're either going to have to say that, you know, she fought till the end or, you know, da-da-da-da-da. They can't really just pick up and go, where is she? And it's like, oh, she... She just stepped out for some cigarettes and she yeah, never so came back. the uh, home and away thing? Or, no, neighbours, they just go to Queensland or something? Yeah, she went to Queensland. <laughs> well, that's what the Outer Rim is. Every time the character goes to the Outer Rim, it's like going to Queensland in yeah, neighbours. Yeah. They get sent off. Um, well, where are we at? Yeah, yeah, I'm just sort of saying, well, yeah, we've got some pretty good pretty good time, some discussions in here. So, uh, you any, any sort of closing thoughts before, you know, where you want to, you obviously seem pretty content to just sort of let it roll and I'll, I'll go along and I'll, uh, I'll happily see where it takes me. Yeah, especially side movies, um, like your solos and rogue ones. If it's a decent movie, I'm happy. I've probably put a lot more into the saga movies in terms of, I don't want them to suck. We've had some of them suck. We don't need any more to suck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep. I want to keep that record pretty clean, yeah. pretty clean on there. And Cam, I mean, you've only just been on recently. Don't, do you have any other? You know, you've done solo a couple of times, and uh, yeah, well, I, I rarely go see a film twice. But it was like, oh, okay, I'm just go Dara. Yeah. <laughs> don't know they have a good time. Um, so you're at Gully Chaps. If anybody wants to catch you, I don't know. I don't think you got any real massive heat on from the last time. Although I got a couple of, oh, I got a couple of nice, some nice tweets. About some it. nice tweets and things. I had um, Eric Struthers, who's a listener, who's a big supporter of the show, who's a gun muso himself. He's he was very happy with the music talk on the thing. He was happy to hear some mu- mu- musician talk. We didn't really get into it this time, but you know, it's always next. A little bit of Black Eyed Peas talk, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, the fans. He's like a big Black Eyed Peas fan. You yeah, how dare you? I never threw out my CD out of the window when uh, Elefunk came out. Yeah, <laughs> Elefunk, that was it. Oh, oh Jesus. God, I can't believe I pulled that so quickly. He was so upset. <laughs> uh, he probably never forgot. He probably didn't try and harass Fergie out of the band, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, just moved that's on. the trick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're upset, just yeah. accept it. And, and just... I bet you he's been like caught drunk at some club like my lovely lady <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like. you came around yeah, yeah you would have came around to that one you can't can't deny yeah. that one. Dara where can people find you on social media you're uh, on there I've seen it yeah you can find me at Goat of Wisdom uh, there and I am plenty of wisdom very very, uh, very little wisdom even less goats well you know what a sell <laughs> <laughs> alright thanks guys thanks for coming on Thank you. Right. See you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.